Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're discussing whether or not Thailand is a quote-unquote geopolitical swing state. I thought, of, I thought of making this video after reading a recent article from, of all places, Goldman Sachs, goldmansachs.com. Article is titled, The Rise of Geopolitical Swing States. Quoting some excerpts here, and I urge those who are watching this, Really interesting article, a lot of information in there. Quoting directly, the great powers are not the only players that matter in today's great power competition. Geopolitical swing states are taking on new prominence. Now, first of all, the notion of a swing state, this is very much kind of an American, like almost a slang term. I wouldn't say slang, but American euphemism. A swing, a swing state, especially when you're talking about elections in the United States, because of the way our electoral college works, you can end up with these situations where one, two, maybe a few states are very key to winning an election, especially for president in the United States, as a result of the fact that you know these, these states, for example, Florida in the 2000 election was a swing state. It was considered a swing state insofar as you know, it ended, up, it ended up really deciding the election, e even though it was one state. So, you know, you can see this phenomenon, if, if, I believe the 2004 election, Ohio, for example, was sort of the swing state. The person that garnered that sort of, sort of took everything. The election of 2016, you know, the so-called inside straight, as they called it back in, in America, you know, President Trump was able to secure, I think, Wisconsin, states like Wisconsin, can't remember if Michigan was one of them, and thereby gain the presidency. So it's this notion that you know, sort of a single state can have a have sort of a outsize effect on the overall outcome a sort of things. That's that's the way I look at it. So quoting here again, I'm going to start over. The great powers are not the only players that matter in today's great power competition. Geopolitical swing states are taking on new prominence, and their importance will lead to new forms of international cooperation. Quoting further, but the most interesting new frontier of international cooperation is technology, where capability alliances will become more important. There's a critical gap in democratic cooperation on techno technology issues, on everything from standard setting to investment, in part because of protectionism and also because the U.S. has a difficult time determining which countries to include and exclude. Quoting further, the rise of geopolitical swing states may balance the great powers and help stabilize the global order. Their interest-based decision-making could be a source of consistency in uncertain times, or their newfound prominence may increase global instability by putting more actors and variables in play. But even if today's world is not yet multipolar, a rising group of countries recognize that they can determine the course of world events. Quoting further, the great powers should take note. So, so should multinational businesses, which increasingly find themselves in the geopolitical crosshairs. These companies are struggling to parse macro trends, searching for investment sources and destinations to deliver the most effective returns on their capital, and looking for ways to build more resilience into their supply chains. So when reading this, I immediately was thinking about, you know, Americans doing business here in Thailand via the U.S. Thai Treaty of Amity. And for those who are unaware, the terms of the U.S. Thai Treaty of Amity grant Americans what's called national treatment in Thailand to do business in much the same way that Thai businesses can do business. This is very different than the way in which many other foreign companies and foreign nationals must do business in Thailand pursuant to the provisions of the Foreign Business Act. And while Thailand is not specifically mentioned in this article, I find it, I, I think, to my mind, Thailand has always, in my opinion, been a quote-unquote geopolitical swing state. It kind of operated that way when you go back to the old colonial period. It kind of operated that way when you go back to the Cold War period in many ways, albeit Thailand was very much at the forefront and acted as a bulwark against communism, which was a great thing for Western civilization. Of that, there is no doubt. But you know, even now today, where we're starting to see the rise of, of Asia geoeconomically, Thailand is, in my opinion, is going to play a critical role moving forward in sort of the, the geography of business, if you will. If, if, yeah, obviously for the geographic position, but also for Thailand's unique position of being able to balance various interests and various concerns 
when dealing with the rest of the world. Thailand is very, very unique in that way, and, and, and I find Thailand to be a very much a, a case study in a mid-size, if you will, country dealing with the rest of the world. And, and I think it's an example for many other jurisdictions around the world, especially in the global south, on how to deal with this ever-changing geoeconomic situation that we find ourselves in.